Welcome to Bitcoin Stuff. Welcome back to part two of my uh, interview with Paul Stortz. Um, here he talks to me about the difference between the cryptography mindset and the game theory mindset. So let's all listen in, shall we? Drive chain is a very interesting interpersonal effect, I think, which is that it it decreases the relevance of being a Bitcoin expert. Because if you, it's sort of like the where we are now is that there's only one um, Bitcoin, mm, it's only like one Bitcoin uh, television channel, the core channel. And so if you're the producer of that channel, or if you're one of the producers, then you're a really important person. And like yeah. having access to that person and like being their friend and <laughs> money or whatever, that's like a big deal. But if you change it all around so that anyone can create that, you make it more like YouTube where anyone can create their own channel and anyone can listen to whatever channel they want. So instead of being like broadcast television through the airwaves, it's more like the internet. Then it's not really important to be friends with that guy anymore, the original producer. And maybe he's like a great advisor or maybe, maybe not, or maybe whatever, like maybe he was good at certain things like trying to manage all these compromises but now it's different and this whole thing you have the long tail and you have these niches and it looks maybe it looks different so i think oh you said niches for for a moment i thought you said geishas and i was like what is he talking be... about <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool too though yeah that would also be yeah we can put that in put images of that everywhere and yeah um uh, but i think it's interesting that um it kind of I'm not sure how to say like it i'm i'm a i'm not people there's a milton friedman has like a big paragraph about um why the free market has a, a bad press and why you know there's like a lot of heat from intellectuals don't like markets because it means that they'll no longer be experts because you're free to try every dumb idea and so that means that they're just you know so i i'm not sure exactly what um will happen as a result of that effect, but I think it is salient and I think people should watch for it and be kind of pay some attention to it. So when I heard that from Paul Stork, I thought, wow, that's quite a profound change in the culture of Bitcoin that he's proposing. I mean, that is quite revolutionary. And then I thought back to uh, something he had told me earlier. And I think there is like a kind of difference between like a cryptographer point of view and then there's like a economics game theorist point of view and there's kind of it's basically about how much they value independence and the cryptographers i think they want total independence in a strict like science statistical sense like they want to build a safe that cannot be opened unless you have the password even if you have a computer the size of the sun or whatever other weird stuff, right? They want to say like, this is totally ironclad. Like there's absolutely nothing anyone can do. It's completely unbreakable encryption, blah, 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 blah. But the the other extreme is that you kind of, it's sort of more of the economics thing where it's like, well, I'm going to go down the street and I'm going to buy some lunch. And I don't know what they're putting in that lunch, but I've eaten there for years and it tastes okay to me. And there's some pro somewhere, there's some process that if they do something bad with the lunch, someone else will like fix it or something there's someone will get bad press or the someone will call someone and complain and something will be in the media or something like that and they'll just go out of business eventually and someone else will take that spot because they won't be able to afford rent and so game theory is all about interdependence it's all about like everyone's pointing a gun it's like a mexican standoff a mexican standoff is like game theorist approved it's like a plus <laughs> Because it's like perfect, <laughs> it's like perfectly balanced, you know. And yeah, you're like, I love it. And then, the but the cryptographers are like, oh, what if what if they go crazy and and shoot us? That's kind of like the miners versus developers, I think. I thought that was really interesting what Paul said about the cryptographer mindset versus the game theorist mindset. Because doesn't that just kind of explain everything? Uh, talking to these blockstream people is like impossible. Like their thinking is at once so intricate and yet so idiotic. They really think that they are going to build an investment without figuring out what investors 
would want, okay? They are like totally rigid, okay? And, and, and talking to them is like a terrible things could happen if we increase the block size from one megabyte to two. Uh, hey, you're not allowed to build forks without replay protection because that would not meet our exacting standards. They think everything is an attack, too. Every, everything is an attack with these guys. They attacked Bitcoin by making a competitive product. What a bunch of losers. People are buying it even though their programmers aren't as good. That's cheating. That's, that's what I think when people talk to me about market manipulation. I mean, what a, uh, what, what a waste of breath. I mean, what, what a uh, worthless discussion. So a couple of years ago, it was kind of like... Um, I kind of was like, uh, well, Bitcoin is getting kind of boring now, so I'll just uh, do some other things for a while. Then I look back in, and I'm like, oh, it turned into a cult. How did that happen? Well, there you go. That's the explanation. Paul figured it out. So, uh, it, like, remember what he said. It's like, to a game theorist, a, a Mexican standoff is fine. That's a, a perfectly good situation. And to a cryptographer, it's like, oh no, it's theoretically possible that someone could do something totally irrational that would destroy Bitcoin. Um, they're, they're terrified of markets, okay? Because you need to be a game theorist if you want to live in the market, okay? But that's all we got. That's all Bitcoin is. It's a big market, okay? And that terrifies them. They're trying to rationalize it, and the only way to do that is to create a cult. So, um, I recently, you know, I've been making jokes about uh, the Blackstream cult, but recently I met somebody who just, just, just screamed cult member to me. And yes, that's what this video is really about. My videos are deceptive, so, uh, I mean, you should, you should have known that by now. Um, You'll thank me later for teaching you never to trust anyone. Now, this person, who is called uh, Weatherman I Am on Twitter, wanted to convince me to come out against Segwit2x. And uh, I think he is trying to be nice, and clearly he has appreciated my work quite a bit. But uh, I think that he has adopted an attitude which is toxic and uh, which, which should not be tolerated in Bitcoin. And we ended up having two discussions. I'm going to analyze them uh, just to show how culty uh, the, uh, the Blockstream people have become. And I, I have included links to the discussions below. I'm not recommending them as uh, something entertaining because uh, I really, uh, I, I didn't really know what to do with this guy. I, I think the, the conversations are pretty tedious. But I would encourage you to uh, look if you think that I am mischaracterizing them in, in any way. Um, so I know I happen to know a thing or two about cults. Not that I am a uh, PhD psychologist or anything, but I take uh, kind of an interest in them. So I'm going to analyze his behavior uh, as to, to what I think is culty about it. Now, first of all, uh, what you see here is a bit of flattery. And uh, there is more to come, even after I asked him to stop. Um, and, uh, of course, I am happy to hear if you have uh, enjoyed my articles and learned from them. But uh, you really only need to tell me once. Uh, otherwise, if I suspect that you are trying to stimulate my pleasure center, uh, then I think that is a bad sign. And I don't think there was really anything at risk here other than being made fun of now in in a cult it is all about your position and it is all about who you know because a, a cult is a big popularity contest and that's kind of what a cult is here's my impression of a cult member the people on the outside don't even know about the popularity contest idiots and uh, I, I would say that whether men I am stays stays in the popularity contest. He he continues to act like we are all in a big popularity contest during uh both of our discussions. So uh that that is that is a bad sign. 
Uh, so it begins with possibly the longest compliment that I've ever received. I know you think I was kind of maybe uh, kissing your butt a little bit to get you to come on, but seriously, I, I owe you, man, because just before, uh, I cannot believe that I missed this. I cannot believe that I didn't realize that these guys are hawking open source software with a token and the most valuable change that's going to be made once it's open source is to switch it to Bitcoin, right? Like you, you can't have that walled garden and be open source at the same time. You can't force people to use your app token to access an open source service. It doesn't make sense. So I immediately say that about a ton of people, right? Like there, there isn't that many people that have intellectually saved me uh, that are alive today uh, from being totally taking your, taking your wealth um, under threat of force. Um, and I think that's a that's as good of a definition of slavery as I've ever found. So, so I'm pretty passionate about this stuff, and I definitely want it to succeed. So, anytime somebody helps me uh, avoid a, a pitfall, um, I'm super grateful for it. But once again, I am happy if you have enjoyed my articles and learned from them. But uh, you don't really need to be my friend that badly. I'm pretty open to talking to anybody. Uh, and uh, to me, that is a suspicious level of flattery because it's really not about who you know. It's about collecting the best ideas for yourself. Uh, and anybody could turn out to be stupid at any moment, and everybody has his own secret plans. So uh, you should be suspicious too. You should be suspicious of people who are smarter than you, honestly. And... Um, uh, and to me, this is a suspicious level of, of flattery. And turns out there is a stick as well as a carrot because later on he says, I do have a problem with the idea of you kind of standing in that position of authority, right? Because obviously we're not at a hundred billion dollar market cap plus because we only have technical investors. In there. What, what did you so, say about authority? I, I said, I don't like the idea of you standing in a position of authority saying, wait, I don't stand. I don't stand in any position of authority. Anybody can stop listening to me at any time. So he doesn't like it that I am sitting here ignorantly disagreeing with the consensus. And he's kind of threatening me a little bit. He's saying, maybe you'll lose the popularity contest if you don't go along with us. And uh, I'm saying it is not a popularity contest. It is about who ultimately is right. And, um, it's not about who is embarrassed today. The problem is, is that there are people that are misinformed, right? And they're going to go to a place like the Satoshi Nakamoto Institute to try to learn. And they're going to go to a guy like you that has a lot of credibility for good reason. And they're going to want to know, what should I do to make money in, in crypto? And of course, this, this is the sort of thing that a high level cult member would respond very well to. First, you first, first, somebody acts like, uh, he is very, very high up, so of course he likes that because it, uh, it position is everything. It is a big popularity contest in a cult, and then uh, the then the other person says, maybe you won't be so popular if you don't go along with us. You know that people that are experts and people that claim to be experts should um, make wise investment decisions for themselves, and then they should also share that knowledge with the rest of the world. Okay, well, I definitely only share the knowledge that I want to share, okay? You don't get my secrets, okay? I do not share knowledge, you know, unless I've decided to. So that's definitely not how I am. That's fine. Um, I mean, you, you can deal with that with, uh, with your priest or whatever. Of course, in, in real life, it is ridiculous to have a consensus about what will happen in the future. Uh, nobody really knows. So there will be disagreement. And in fact, if, if there is a consensus, that is a, uh, a suggestion that people may not be thinking. Because if there is disagreement, that shows that there is at least some level of thinking going on. Whereas if there is a consensus, that could mean that there is no thinking going on. It, it is not evidence of any thinking. Yeah, I'm saying that if, if you invest five hours into trying to understand what Segwit2x is and the pros and cons of it versus Bitcoin, that you will conclude that it's doomed, and then you will sell it, and you'll end up with 10% more Bitcoin. Now here he says, maybe you could make 10% if you bet with me. He doesn't mention the risk that he doesn't know what he's talking about, in which case I would lose everything. Um, and notice how he says, uh, you are a great economist. Therefore, please 
come along with us and uh, tow the party line. He does not say, uh, you are a great economist, so please share your economics wisdom from me. He, he is not interested in uh, learning my perspective. He is interested in influencing me. Now, uh, in real life, it is good if people are ignorantly disagreeing with you, because that means you make more money. Okay? Because if everybody agrees about the future, that means nobody is more competitive than anybody else about knowing the future. But if you are one of a select few people who knows the future, then you can make more money, because you will share the profits with fewer people. So if you are, it is only if you are in a cult that, that you feel a need to, uh, to influence other people to agree with you. Other, otherwise, you don't need that, because you, you know that you're just going to make more. And of course, I am making a bet too. I, I am betting that my uh, investor uh, game theory mindset is ultimately more important than uh, the details of the cryptography mindset of the core developers. And so I, I am betting that I can come out ahead without uh, being too up to date on what they are saying. And this, this is a classic cult technique is to say, uh, you, you don't know what you're talking about if you don't know everything in our giant book of wisdom. And I am saying that I think I will be fine without looking in your book of wisdom. So the next thing is he is kind of easily abused. Okay, so he is, he is treating me like I'm so important that uh, he can take all of the shit that I am giving him. Because I, I was kind of a jerk to him. And that's ridiculous. You can't, you can't, if, the, if one Bitcoin doesn't work, it can't be valuable. That's silly. No, no, Bitcoin does work right now, right? Just like, um, are you familiar with the... Uh, oh, wait, 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 okay. And I felt kind of bad after, uh, after I had this discussion, because I was like, geez, what... What is going on? And it's kind of like he never he never gives me a um, a, uh, a a feedback that you would get in like a normal person setting. He never is like, hey, you know, that's that's a little uh, over the top there. You know, uh, not not saying that that excuses me, but that's that's probably what I would have gotten in a normal person setting. You know, he gave me uh, more flattery on Twitter after. Uh, after our discussion, so he is uh, he he is very very willing to take abuse uh, if he thinks it will uh, help him win the popularity contest. So here he did something that was a little bit annoying, and that is that he kind of assumed that our discussion was ongoing because he, he says he'll, he'll he'll ping me as soon as he uh, gathers his thoughts on some things that he didn't anticipate. And to me, I, I had already given him a little over an hour and a half of my time to listen to his sales pitch. And uh, I, I think that that should be enough. But if there's anything that cults like, it is unboundedly long sales pitches. So uh, cults do not like to uh, draw your attention to when you have the choice to leave. And uh, this this was when I was feeling like I wanted to leave. So I said something to him that I really thought was going to make him go away. I told him that we were going to take turns a as to the video topic, and uh, the second topic was going to be uh, the ways that you resemble a cult member, okay? And uh, I did not really think that he was going to go for this. I thought that I was just saying something uh, rude to make him stop talking to me, okay? Uh, but he actually agreed to it. He said, uh, perfect. This is sort of like amazing to me. Like only, it, this is something that only, only a true cult member would, would agree to. Because think about it. What, what if I just met somebody outside, like in Starbucks, and we hit it off, and I was saying, hey, you know, Maybe we should hang out sometime, but wait a minute. You better prove to me you're not a cult member first, okay? The normal person reaction to that would be, ah, uh, fuck off, okay? But to him, he is like, ah, what a perfect topic for me to make Daniel look stupid. I, I will show him that I am not a cult member, and he will look silly. Uh, 
No, that's not how it works. If, if you are the one trying to, to prove that you're not a cult member, uh, you are the one who looks silly. Now, I talked about how he tried to be manipulative earlier, but notice how easily manipulated he is himself here, because I basically put him in a position where I have all of the power and he has none. And he has to prove a negative, and it, it, he, he is going to uh, snap to attention to prove to me that he is not a cult member, even if I am not taking the discussion very seriously. And it, it is like, I, I am so important that uh, I, I can impose any kind of ridiculous demand upon him. And I could have pressed for the advantage a lot more in discussion too, I guess. But I was I was kind of weirded out because I was I kind of felt like this. Duck season, rabbit season, rabbit season, duck season. The only difference is that Bugs Bunny uh, has a plan. Like he knows what to do with people who fall for the the dumbest imaginable ruses. And and I was just kind of like. Uh, like, what, what do you really do with somebody who thinks it is a good idea to uh, try to prove to me that he is not a cult member? I mean, that is, like, uh, I, I, I put him in a completely unfair situation, and he totally went for it. And that is, like, the essence of being a cult member. And you notice how he never asked me to prove to him that I'm not a cult member, okay? Like, that is how narrow his thinking is. He's never like, uh, wait a minute, why don't you prove to me that you're not a cult member? Like, he, he is just, he is ready f f to, to do anything I tell him. And I, I should have told him to do a song and dance, and then maybe maybe he would have figured out that uh, I'm, I'm not uh, too interested, you know? So, uh, yeah, to, so to recap, um, I got into Bitcoin, and I was like, where did all these fucking cult members come from? And uh, Paul Stortz showed me the answer in our discussion that we had. And I was like, a a and he has the solution, too, not just the answer. He knows the cure, because once we let, we let stupid people just do any stupid thing, uh, in a way that makes the developers feel safer, then uh, everything will be fine. They don't need a cult anymore. So um, uh, that's kind of like uh, doing things the easy way. I've been doing doing things the hard way, and I'm fine doing things the hard way. They they're the ones who don't like the hard way. Okay. So I'm time like we can do things the hard way, or we can do things the easy way. So he he's got the easy way, and uh, but I like the hardware too. So uh, we can cure, cure the Bitcoin blockstream cult uh, with drive chains. And uh, Bitcoin Cash should implement them as well because competition.